So I was actually uh, in Dallas for the uh, Blackwater reunion. So um, after a very uh, long weekend of drinking, you know, um, and we had this penthouse. So all the after parties were coming through um, all hours of the night. So there wasn't a lot of sleep getting done, a lot of alcohol ingested. Um, so when I got to the airport, you know, luckily I was just sitting there drinking some ginger ale, just waiting for my flight. And uh, I just couldn't wait to get in my business class seat, creep the seat back and get some sleep. Um, so I loaded up on my flight. I was I'm sitting on a uh, row four and it just happened to be a window seat. And uh, once we got to, they announced it, we're at 36,000 feet and they just brought us our drinks. So I had a ginger ale sitting in front of me and my phone was about to die, but I just opened up my laptop and uh, some guy stumbles into first class and I noticed he's got a hoodie on and he had his hands cupped almost like he was carrying something and he was kind of bumping into seats and stuff. So I'm sitting there watching and, uh, and then I look at the flight attendant who's in front of the cockpit door and I'm watching her facial expressions and I could see her face tensing up tensing up and she started to put her hand out like this and, and says sir 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 and then uh, a lady in row one just starts screaming like bloody murder like she's you know in a, a movie and uh, so I hopped over the seat over the guy that was sitting in the aisle and I came up behind the guy who I didn't know what he had in his hands and he didn't see me coming so I peeked over his shoulder and uh, what he had done is he had his junk out. He was exposing himself, pissing all over the lady. So um, I brachial stunned him in the neck. Wow. And when I came around, I busted his lip and put him in a chokehold, flipped him down and uh, got him in the aisle and just was choking him out and got him pinned. And then I thought for a second, I'm like, holy shit, this just happened. <laughs> Am I the one that screwed up here? Am I going to be in handcuffs? And I looked back at the flight attendant and she's like, what do you need from me? I was like, notify the pilot what's going on. He's probably going to want to divert the flight. And uh, sure enough, she did. And he co she comes back and um, I've got the guy down. And uh, she said, we're going to New Orleans. And I'm thinking to myself, well, that's a bad place to go to jail, buddy. Shouldn't have done that. And uh, she's like, we're going to clear out row eight. Would you mind sitting with them? And I'm like, well, not I'm, particularly I'm like I'm kind of enjoying myself in business class where I paid for to be <laughs> I was like that's fine I said but do you have any zip ties she's like we've got uh duct tape I said okay you'll get the duct tape some guy came in from coach he's like hey I've got zip ties I was like go get them so he comes back with these little teeny tiny skinny zip ties that probably would have sliced his wrists all up if not broke I was like yeah that's not gonna work buddy um, so she brought me the duct tape. I put his arms behind his back, uh, crisscrossed him like this and just started taping him. And I taped him really good. Uh, some guy got up and helped me grab an arm and we got him up, got him seated in the seat and buckled up. And then another guy told me that he was sitting there beforehand and he didn't mind sitting with the guys. Perfect. I went back to my first class seat. Um, but it was funny. We landed in New Orleans and there was like six or seven police officers come on board. And, uh, you know, I heard one of them saying, I hope you get to tase this guy, you know, and I'm like, wow, that'd be fun to watch <laughs> on a plane. And uh, they end up taking him off. And I could see the police talking, the police officers talking to the flight attendants and stuff, what's going on. And uh, she's pointing back at my row. Well, the guy sitting next to me was a big guy. You know, I'm not a big guy. You know, I'm, I'm relatively, you know, small in comparison to the guys I hang out with usually. And uh, so the cop goes up to him and starts talking to him. He's like, looking at the cop. He's like, no, dude, it's him. It's him. And he looks at me. Now, you got to understand what I was wearing. I'm wearing a, uh, a T-shirt. It's got a picture of Afghanistan on it. It says, all for what? With a question mark. I'm wearing jeans with a hole in the knee. And I'm wearing flip-flops. And my toenails are painted black. Why, what's so the reason for that? Looking, why why uh, black to toenails? You know, I've, I've lost a lot of friends uh, to suicide, you know, from coming back. And so every morning, you know, when I get in that shower, you know, when I'm washing myself, I look down and I see my black toenails. And it's just a constant reminder of uh, uh, guys that I've lost, personally known, and uh, and the daily fight that a lot of people are dealing with. Gotcha. I, 
I'll be honest. That was like a darker answer than I expect. I'm like black toenails. It just it's it seems so silly, but you know, yeah. I'm like are you are you hanging out with like a hot goth chick or something? But no, that and and that is that is a serious issue, obviously. Um. All right. So back to what you're doing, getting off the plane. So he he pulls me off the plane, asked me what happened and stuff, and I told him. Well, by this time the cleaning people had got on, so I couldn't get back to my seat. So I'm hanging out before camp cabin, and the captain comes out, thanks me. And the flight attendant was, uh, you know, thanking me. She's like, I just, I was calling for help and nobody would come. She's like, literally nobody was getting up. and The other flight attendants weren't coming. She's like, thankfully you jumped up. And, uh, and I told her, I said, well, I said, I caught it out of the corner of my eye. I saw one guy unbuckling. Um, I said, I'm sure somebody would have done something, you know, but I, as I stated, oh. I said, you know, this, this has played out in my head after 9-11. And I'm sure it's played out in a number of guys that I've worked with over the years. And I have no doubts, the kind of people that I hang out with, everybody would have jumped on in this guy. Um, so, I mean, that's just, you know, I made a comment last, uh, uh, last episode is uh, you can't win a fight unless you get in a fight. And I don't know what this guy's intentions were or anything else, you know. Um, I since know now what the problem was. But, you know, like I said, scenario plays out. You've got to, you can't hesitate. You've got to get in there and get in that fight. It's amazing that you did that, though, because I, I do think it's very possible that if you weren't on that flight, it could have been way worse. And I mean, it doesn't seem like the guy was violent, but uh, he could have been. It could have been the same scenario with a guy who was violent in a terrorist attack. And yeah, you need to have people like you on a flight to, to do what you're trained to do. Yeah, Like I said, I, I know a lot of guys that would have done it and enjoyed it. And in fact, I had a lot of guys... Uh, hit me up afterwards they're like man you know how many flights i'm on nothing like that that's happened and i've got a buddy of mine uh, he's an air marshal um he told me the same thing he says you know how many air marshals that have done a whole career without any incidents going on and uh there you are shit magnet <laughs> boom i said well i can check that one off at the bucket list <laughs>